Good evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson, on this May 2nd, 2012 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Paul Joseph Watson covers the no-fly zone that will be over Chicago during the NATO summit with shoot-to-kill orders. Then, a renowned treasure hunter who doesn't buy the Bin Laden fable plans on diving to the site where the body was reportedly dumped to do DNA testing. And a Tennessee man arrested for using cash. Then, Darren McBreen interviews Luke Radowski on his recent confrontation with Obama lackey Cass Sunstein. Darren will also give us an update on the case involving chicken man Andrew Wordis. It's all this and more on InfoWars Nightly News. I take you now to London, England with Paul Joseph Watson. First story tonight on InfoWars Nightly News out of CBS Chicago. No fly zone to be enforced by shoot to kill order during NATO summit. A new report reveals plans to keep residents and dignitaries safe during the NATO summit. Uh, include a no fly zone with a shoot to kill mandate for those who break the ban. Quote, the United States government may use deadly force against the airborne aircraft if it is determined that the aircraft poses an imminent security threat, the advisory says. Be advised that non-compliance with the published notice to airmen may result in the use of force. So we already have the evacuation order uh, that was handed to the Red Cross by city officials and the Secret Service, of course, who later denied all knowledge. Uh, we've got tenants being warned to leave the city by their management companies. Um, and now we've got a shoot to kill no fly zone. So it's basically all part of the police state showcase that accompanies every one of these national security events. And the message being sent, sent is that, you know, when the NATO gods meet, you will not interfere. Uh, they're setting up the free speech zones. They're trying to move them as far away from the actual summit as possible. Uh, they've got heavily armed feds roaming around the city, uh, and they're shutting down the highways and putting up checkpoints. Um, so it represents, again, a massive photo opportunity for the government to showcase how America is now officially a militarized police state. Uh, and it sends the message that, you know, protesting against the New World Order will be met by an army of gun-wielding goons, uh, surveillance technologies, and torture tools. And it's the whole process of uh, making the idea itself of merely protesting this gaggle of crooks as somehow dirty, criminal, and akin to terrorism. So welcome to the New World Order. The First Amendment has been abolished. Treasure hunter fears assassination over search for bin Laden's body. The California treasure hunter who believes he has located the spot where the U.S. Navy allegedly dumped the body of Osama bin Laden says he wants to try and discover the corpse and subject it to DNA testing because he doesn't believe the Obama administration's official story about the death of the al-Qaeda leader. Fearing the U.S. government could target him for assassination if he tries to recover the cadaver, uh, shipwreck expert Bill Warren told Spanish newspaper El Mundo that he has pinpointed the site where Bin Laden's body was ejected uh, by using recently released U.S. Navy photos. So basically, we've got this famous treasure hunter, and he's quite well known. You can go and look him up. He's, he's known for doing this kind of thing. He's trying to collect $200,000 to pay for this mission, uh, which he plans to get underway in uh, early June. And he says it could take up to three months, but as little as one week to find the supposed corpse of Osama bin Laden or whatever it is that they dumped in the ocean. But of course, what all the media coverage of this has sidelined is the fact that the primary reason of why he's going to the trouble of doing all this is because he doesn't believe the government's official narrative uh, on the dubious bin Laden raid. So that's why he's so fearful of being assassinated before he's even able to recover the body, um, because he doesn't believe they actually killed him at the time when they announced it happened, of course, one year ago. So given the fact that we've exhaustively documented the phony narrative uh, surrounding the bin Laden execution, uh, you know, the innumerable, innumerable experts saying that he died as much as 10 years beforehand, uh, the stage situation room photos with you know, Obama and Hillary Clinton looking really grim and serious because they watched it happening live 
Turns out that was complete BS. They never watched it at all. Stage managed for propaganda purposes. Um, and, of course, we had all the villagers in the neighbourhood saying they knew the people who lived in that house. It wasn't Bin Laden. It was just their regular neighbours amidst a deluge of other evidence that we've catalogued. And it sounds like this treasure hunter, Bill Warren, uh, is aware of all this. He's been reading InfoWars, presumably. Um, so let's hope that this dangerous mission that he's about to embark on with the knowledge that it could make him a target for assassination uh, is indeed successful because, you know, the U.S. government has refused to release DNA evidence. They've refused to release photographs of bin Laden's corpse. So uh, this private individual is going to go out and try and find the evidence for himself. So we'll, we will await the results with bated breath. Next story. Tech giant warns CISPA is alarming threat to privacy. Tech giant Mozilla has publicly slammed the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, CISPA, which passed the House last week, labeling the legislation an alarming threat to privacy. And you can read the full statement on Infowars.com. So basically, every other Silicon Valley giant is backing this bill because they know that the backlash that we saw with SOPA hasn't arrived. It hasn't been allowed to build that kind of momentum. Um, but kudos to Mozilla for condemning this because they're the only ones to do so. Uh, Apple, Google, AOL, Symantec, all of them are back in this. And of course, CISPA has passed the House, but it's, it's heading to the Senate where it's going to be a, uh, amalgamated with two other bills one of two other bills, uh, one of which is sponsored by Joe. We need an internet kill switch like communist China Lieberman. Again, that's of no concern whatsoever. And then obviously it heads to Obama's desk, but don't worry, because he's promised to veto it, just like he promised to veto the NDAA. And we all know how that ended up. Um, so what precisely will CISPA enact if it is allowed to pass? Well, according to TechDirt's Lee Beden, who's analyzed the bill, quote, the government will be able to search information it collects under CISPA for the purposes of investigating American citizens with complete immunity from all privacy protections as long as they can claim someone committed a, quote, cyber security crime. Basically, it says the Fourth Amendment does not apply online at all. That's right, completely kills it stone dead. Moreover, the government can do whatever it wants with the data as long as it can claim that someone was in danger of bodily harm or that the children were somehow threatened. The children, it's all for the children. And of course, we reported on another provision of CISPA, which is the fact that it allows the DHS to intercept all federal communications, including your tax returns. Uh, so unless the fight to push back CISPA uh, gains in momentum, uh, all the people who fought SOPA are going to find that their efforts were in vain. Homeland Security official tweets socialist applause, happy May Day, from the Daily Caller. And there's also an Infowars.com article about this as well. A staffer for President Barack Obama's Department of Homeland Security is praising the left-wing May Day protests on Tuesday evening Nate Snyder, the special advisor to Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano for, quote, community partnership and strategic engagement, tweeted, quote, happy May Day, hashtag solidarity. And this follows on, of course, from yesterday's story about the obama Beden re-election campaign slogan, uh, which, of course, is forward, borrowed uh, from Marxist and communist publications and political slogans of decades past. And of course, we know, as uh, Joel Skousen documented at length yesterday, May 1st is the International Day of Commies. Uh, it's the day China and North Korea and the former Soviet Union like to roll out their tanks and celebrate communism and red terror and that kind of cuddly-feely thing. Uh, so the fact that the Obama administration you know, with Obama himself, his history, his rise to prominence being off the back of the communist weather underground terrorist Bill Ayers, uh, and of course the DHS, whose every action uh, seems to revolve around turning the United States into America with a K, they're both hailing Global Communist Day, so it makes perfect sense. Very fitting indeed. Next story, Obama Nazi posters go viral. AOL corporate asset, the Huffington Post, 
has posted an article insinuating that Alex Jones is linked to a flyer distributed in Michigan that features a Nazi swastika. The flyer pairs an image of a swastika alongside a movie cover for the film, The Obama Deception, a documentary. They put, they put documentary in hyphen like it's not a real documentary. <laughs> it's only got tens of millions of views, but it's not a documentary because they you know, put a slight on it with little commas next to it. Documentary by renowned right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, the site reports. According to M Live, the fly was placed on parking meters in downtown Grand Rapids. So, according to the left, characterizing Obama as a Nazi is certainly unfair. I mean, it is unfair in the sense that, you know, they're not gassing people in death camps or anything. But the administration has certainly, ex you know, they've exercised powers that the Nazis refused to even claim. When the Nazis executed people, at least they were forced to put on some kind of show trial. I'm talking about before the war, you know, before they went through with it. Not the Obama administration. They claim, of course, the power to able to assassinate American citizens worldwide with no legal due process. That could be described as a Nazi type power. You know, signing the NDAA, uh, Americans snatched off the street, detained without trial. That could be described as a Nazi style power. But as we document in this article, it's more accurate to describe the Obama administration as fascist because of the fact that it's completely controlled by corporate interests and the likes of Goldman Sachs. And of course, the uh, liberal Huffington Post fails to mention the fact that for eight years, the left depicted George W. Bush as a Nazi. Um, but God forbid anybody should do the same to Obama. I mean, remember when the Joker poster contest was running and people were getting arrested simply for posting these flyers up everywhere uh, and being you know accused of engaging in racist hate crimes for depicting obama as the joker out of batman again the left did it for eight years to bush uh, but when the the same criticism is leveled at christ incarnate barack obama such dissent cannot be tolerated and they'll use the smear to reflect back on infowars even though, you know, we've got nothing to do with it. But if people want to do it, then that's their free speech. Tennessee man arrested and imprisoned for using cash. A Tennessee man was charged and jailed by police Friday after he used an old $50 bill to pay for goods at a Quick Mart store. Quote, a clerk at Quick Mart, South Cannon Boulevard, notified police after the marker used to detect counterfeit bills didn't check as real, reports David Melson of the Shelbyville Times-Gazette. The front side of the bill was off-center, and it didn't feel like a normal bill. It did look to be counterfeit, Officer Brock Horner said in his report. The man, Lorenzo Gaspar, was taken to jail by the officer, but was released after a sergeant noted that the old bill uh, are still legitimate legal tender, but that the check machines with modern cash markers do not work on them. We've got a related story out of WorldNet Daily, which dovetails with this. Man arrested, cuffed after using $2 bills. Now, remember, the, the $2 bill, although rare, is still in circulation and is legal tender. It's not a fake bill. So a man trying to pay a fee using $2 bills was arrested, handcuffed, and taken to jail after clerks at a Best Buy store questioned the current currency's legitimacy and called the police. Again, total freak out. Just because they're too idiotic to know what currency's in circulation, they call the cops. And basically, this guy was locked up, handcuffed for three hours. Turns out, of course, that the every everything's completely genuine it's in circulation it's legal tender but we're seeing more and more cases of cash being linked with criminal behavior you know we all over the world we've got spain banning cash payments for anything over 2500 euros we've got the british government banning cash in transactions for certain trades such as scrap metal again trying to link it with criminal behavior and it all greases the skids for the implementation of the cashless society, wherein the existence of any kind of black market or indeed any kind of privacy is rendered obsolete. Uh, and of course, that always leads to totalitarian top-down control of the economy. And that's how we end up with things like, you know, 
the Global Food Council and the calorie credit card where the government decides how many calories you're allowed to buy according to your food ration. I mean, that's ultimately where that level of control over the economy, uh, the destruction of the black market ends up. It's all about control. So now we're going to go to our man on the street feature, which this evening is about the Ron Paul rally, which took place in, on April 26 in Austin, Texas. Uh, and again, it just exemplifies the massive crowds that he attracts, uh, the real ideas that he injects into the body politic, uh, and of course, how he's garnering immense support from the US troops and the military community in general. So here's that man on the street report with Darren McBreen. Everywhere we go, we see, you know, Ron Paul bumper stickers, we see the t-shirts, he has a tremendous presence on the internet, yet Romney, I don't see Romney for president bumper stickers, I just don't see that same, you know, presence and same enthusiasm for, for the other candidates, but yet Ron Paul's an underdog, does, it, does that seem strange to you? Well, you know, I think it's something that the Republican Party should look at because, you know, what my grandfather's message is people will get enthusiastic about it and people aren't getting that enthusiastic about what Mitt Romney's saying. So, I mean, I think they need to look at that when they're trying to run against the Democrat in the, for the presidency. You know, they need a message that people get excited about if they want to win. Washington is always the last ones to wake up. You know, where I go, uh, we get the large crowds. And they're very concerned, of course, about the attack on personal liberties. If, uh, if you mention just uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, most people know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's good to have you here. Um, what made you a Ron Paul supporter? Uh, the thing that made me a Ron Paul supporter, I have actually been following him since 2007. I uh, actually looked up all of the presidential candidates back then to see what each and every one of them stands for. Uh, so I know what Ron Paul stands for. So everywhere Ron Paul goes, he's a rock star. He's filling up stadiums. Um, but yet the mainstream media still treats him as an underdog. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, it just continues to show how the mainstream media is not trying to cover anything that's real. And they're not trying to, uh, you know, they're, they're bought, they're paid for. And I think it's, it's completely obvious to everybody. And, and so, um, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, more people will become awakened just because of the fact that they're not showing more Ron Paul and uh, they completely have, have, have turned the attention away from, uh, you know, what, what he's doing, his movement, how he pulls higher, how it seems like um, there's election fraud going on right before our eyes, but we can't get any kind of, uh, you know, uh, mainstream media, what you pull up on your cell phones, what you get on the news and the local uh, stations is, is, has nothing to do with uh, what's really going on and what the, what the people seem to want. They treat him like an underdog. He's supposedly behind, yet everywhere he goes through the campaign trail, this is the kind of crowd that we expect to see. I know, it's shocking. I heard today that we're probably going to have 10,000 people here. Yeah. And the media coverage that's here, thank, thankful that we're thankful that you guys are here. Mm -hmm. And it is surprising to me is, you know, the voting doesn't show these numbers, um, at least the official voting numbers. Whenever you look at online, whenever we get those um, polls oh, yeah. from the, from and the they debate. they stop doing the polls. And they stop yeah, doing yeah. it. They, they, that's what yes. Happens, yeah. Now, others say, well, that's okay to a point, but we have to make sure that nobody ever uses any drugs. And I says, you mean uh, alcohol? Yeah. Oh, no, we don't mean that. We're talking about those illegal bad things. And, uh, and then I said, well, guess where most of the addiction is? Is it on the illegal drugs? No, most of the addiction is on the prescription drugs. That's where the real problem is. No matter what he wins, I mean, even if he does not get elected the presidency, he still wins because he's injecting the real ideas and he's bringing up the real issues and just look at what's happened. We already won. If you look at the contributors of Romney and Obama, you got Goldman Sachs, uh, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, um, JP Morgan, um, Bank of America. Ron Paul's contributors are Air Force, Navy and Army. And, it, and then, then his money bombs where people are pitching in 20 bucks at a time instead of the big corporations. It's thousands and thousands of people pitching in 20 bucks here and there. Exactly. And if you think about it, um, our sense of support comes from uh, true labor. It has real value. It comes from the, working, from the working class. It does not come from the printing shop up at the Federal Reserve. It does not come from the fractional reserve banking system. It does not come from, from Ponzi schemes. It comes from the hard work of the American people. 
Also, the reversal from what happened from 100 years ago has started 10, 20, even 30 years ago. People who have been writing about Austrian free market economics, writing about the Federal Reserve System, and writing about and trying to get people to understand why a non-interventionist foreign policy makes more sense than being the policeman of the world. Now, the biggest thing, reason why I, I support this guy is because it's the reason why I signed up in the first place. I signed up to, to protect the constitution, constitution of the United States of America, and Ron Paul is the closest guy to actually defending those rights that we have. We have a clear candidate who stands for what everybody, whether they know it or not, it's, it's what the truth is and what they stand for. And more and more people are with this awakening are realizing that, they're self-awakening, and they're showing up in droves. We got probably 4,000 people here at this moment. It's not even ready yet. I even ask people questions like, uh, why are you voting for Obama other than the color of his skin? Because that's the majority of people, the reason why they voted for him in the first place, because he was a black guy and everybody else was white. That's why I thought that I saw. But uh, nobody knows, nobody does the research, nobody does the back searching. But the majority of us that go off to the war, who have actually gone off to war, we're pretty much sick and tired of the war. And all we do is we, we want to go home. We don't want any more deaths. We want to stay out of people's businesses, mind our own stuff. That's, what I, uh, that's why I support it. We may have something happen. There may be a false flag uh, incident where some, some uh, ship goes down and you be used for the excuse to accelerate the next war. And... Um, we have to learn to distinguish war propaganda from the truth. I think it's important to take into account that it is not about Dr. Paul. He's a, he's a great messenger. It's about the message. And um, the movement is strong. The movement, the liberty movement, will, is never going to end. And we're just going to get bigger. And I think we're just waiting for that tipping point for the revolution, right, to begin. What would you say to the hardliners who say that Ron Paul is a pacifist because he's not such a warmonger? Well, I would say that you need to do your research more. Obviously, Ron Paul is for the people. You have to get a declaration from the, con uh, the, uh, the Congress. Uh, he would go through the Congress, ask the Congress for approval for war if we decided that we wanted to go after somebody. And uh, from that, he would take his stance. But by no means is he in isolationism. Uh, he just wants to make sure that we focus on ourselves, stop the bleeding before uh, we actually help uh, anybody else. Back when I was, uh, I served in the Navy as well, five years, and uh, one of the best things that they ever taught us was uh, in a, a uh, gas environment, if we have a nerve agent gas that hit us, we would have, uh, we would have had uh, eight seconds to don our gas mask. Now, if you, if you were, uh, had you and your buddy, your buddy was having trouble with the gas mask, and, uh, and you, had, you had to don yours, you had to don yours first. It was by the rules of the Navy that you had to don your gas mask first before you can help them out. Or else if you try to help them out, they didn't live, you would die as well. So us going off to these other countries, try to help them out. Whenever we're bleeding out with our economy the way it is, it's a bunch of garbage. All right, man. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time, bud. I appreciate it. So there you have it, man on the street, tracking the Ron Paul revolution. 95% of the jobs lost during the recession were middle class jobs by Michael Snyder, the economic collapse blog. Who is the biggest loser in the ongoing decline of the US economy? Is it the wealthy? No, the stock market has been soaring lately and their incomes are actually going up. Is it the poor? Well, the poor are definitely hurting very badly, but when you don't have much to begin with, you don't have much to lose. Unfortunately, it's the middle class that has lost the most during this economic downturn. According to Bloomberg, 95% of the jobs lost during the recession were middle class jobs. That's an absolutely astounding figure. And that's the fundamental goal of the post-industrial revolution that the elite is trying to run through. It's to eviscerate the middle class. 
uh, and the Obama administration and the Goldman Sachs bankers who control it are doing a very good job indeed of achieving that aim. And so the only real answer, as we stressed on many occasions, is a lot of people are going to have to find new careers that are not in any way dependent on this rigged system. Uh, more people are going to have to become self-employed. More people are going to have to live off the land. Uh, and it's all about finding alternative streams of revenue uh, because the ones in the mainstream jobs market are rapidly disappearing. Uh, the people at the top make money in a recession. They make money when times are good. Uh, because they're outside of the system. They're not dependent on the system. And that's what more and more people are going to have to realize for themselves. Uh, you're only going to prosper in bad economic times if you're outside, if you extricate yourself um, from the very mainstream jobs market that's uh, suffered this collapse in every way possible. And, you know, with the Internet, that allows more people to do that. It takes passion, takes hard work and takes time. But it's really the only alternative in this plunging economy. Now, top 10 insane conspiracy theories that detract from exposing real cover-ups. Uh, just a little bit of light-hearted fun here to finish the show, because earlier I canvassed people on Facebook about what are the most virulently, you know, viral on the internet, yet most blatantly ludicrous and false insane conspiracy theories that they're sick of hearing about. And these are the kind of things that the uh, establishment routinely seizes on and uses to smear and discredit genuine truth seekers who are just trying to find out about real cover-ups. We get caught in this disinformation maze. Um, so most of this top 10 was actually put out on the internet. There's actual huge forums and discussions about whether these are true or not. Uh, and a few I've just thrown in there for fun. So here we go. Top 10 insane conspiracy theories that detract from exposing real cover-ups. Number 10. Alex Jones is really a Zionist Vatican Jesuit assassin of the high order of the Knights Templar because his son is the kid from Two and a Half Men. That's right. There's a whole forum thread where the evidence is dissected. Uh, the kid from Two and a Half Men was born in Austin and has a face that looks a little bit like Alex Jones. I mean, what more proof do you need? The connections are there, and the proof that it is obviously his son also means that he's a, a Zionist, Vatican, and Jesuit assassin of the High Order of the Knights Templar. The evidence speaks for itself. Number nine, sources from inside the Kremlin routinely brief dubious internet bloggers about their top secret agenda. We saw that recently with the Russian troops seizing Denver Airport, again, completely made up. Number eight, Osama bin Laden and Barack Obama are the same person. And I actually found this out. I was searching for an image for the bin Laden story that we covered earlier and found that detailed analysis has been conducted with the different measurements between the nose and the eyes and all the facial structure. And it's conclusive, apparently, you know, bin Laden, Barack Obama, same person. Number seven. Bill Hicks and Alex Jones are the same person. Again, apparently Hicks faked his own death. He never died of cancer. And he simply became, took on the new career, the new identity of Alex Jones. <laughs> and there's actually, we found out that people actually went and looked at, at libraries and family records bureaus. They actually spent time and energy lending this serious credence to find out if it was true. <laughs> of course, it's not, but a lot of people wasted a lot of time finding that out. Six, chemtrails contain vitamin C and B17 to promote public health. That's right, the chemtrails, just like the vaccines, are nutritious. Number five, top ten insane conspiracy theories that detract from real cover-ups. Tim Geithner, Bill Gates, and thousands of globalists have been arrested. Again. Number four, Paul Joseph Watson is the love child of Queen Beatrix and Henry Kissinger and therefore an agent of the Vatican. Now listen, I've been very open about the fact that I'm a high priest uh, Vatican assassin warlock. Yes, I've been exposed. I admit to it. So that, that one's true. That's not insane. That's completely true. Three, the global intelligence outfit Stratfor was founded in Austin, Texas. 
that automatically must mean that Alex Jones is secretly working for Stratfor. That's right. That's the bombshell evidence. Of course, every other company that was founded in Texas, Alex Jones also works for. He's a very busy man. <laughs> Number two, when Alex Jones was exposed as working secretly for Stratfor at the end of February, he had his secret Israeli Shin Bet assassins kill Andrew Breitbart to provide a distraction to the controversy. Oh, yes. Didn't know about that one, did you? When we were exposed as all working for Stratfor because they based in the same city, bombshell evidence, we actually had to hire our secret Israeli Shin Bet, Shin Bet assassins to go and kill Breitbart. I mean, it's messy business, but we had to provide that distraction from the bombshell. And number one, top 10 insane conspiracy theories that detract from exposing real cover-ups. The most insanely implausible conspiracy theory of them all. It is the terrorist attacked us because they hate our freedom. So there you have it. The top 10 insane conspiracy theories that detract from exposing real cover-ups. Okay, we're going to go to break now, but coming up, Darren McBree interviews Luke Radowski on his outstandingly successful confrontation with White House uh, information czar. Mr. Sunlight being healthy for you is a conspiracy theory. Cass Sunstein. Uh, so be sure to stick around for that. Remember, we rely on your support if you're watching this on YouTube. and We invite you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv where you will get this show live the Alex Jones Show, live streaming video, years of archives, movies, documentaries, speeches, special events. It's all there at prisonplanet.tv, and your subscriptions help fund our entire operation. So stay tuned. We'll be back with that interview with Luke Rudowski straight after this break. Hello, and welcome to this very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Fernando Casares, bringing you the real news. Tonight's first story is headlined, Turn in your bin Ladens. What if using cash becomes a crime? Will the simple act of using cash to pay for things become a crime? Will it be labeled as suspected terrorist activity? Will cash be banned? We are being phased into a total cashless grid where payments and authorizations must be electronic. And the system has long been conditioning us to accept it and ditch black market paper notes. Black market paper notes is what they call them. Really what it is, it's money printed out of thin air from the Federal Reserve. They're trying to call it black market paper notes because they're saying that the only reason that we have cash, I mean the only reason we have drug dealers is because of cash. So if we went to a cashless society, there'd be no drug dealers. When really all that is, is to get us closer to getting an RFID chip, the whole global agenda of being able to track and being able to know what everybody's doing at all times better than they already can. They want to perfect what Hitler did. They liked what Hitler did, but they say he tried to do it too fast. So now what they want to do is do the same thing over 50 to 100 years, and it's getting to the end of the end. They want to have their own IBM computer. They want to have their own punch cards, only it'll be called an RFID chip. Hi, this is Adam Heiferling reporting for Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Located here in the heart of the New World Order capital, Denver, Colorado. This morning at City Park while walking my dog, I decided to bring my iPod to uh, just in case there was something interesting to videotape. I knew they were doing the March of Dimes walk this morning, so I thought it would. Uh, there might be something interesting going on, you never know, in uh, the heart of the New World Order. And... Um, as I was walking through the park, I noticed there was a uh, military with uh, camo fatigues on doing security for the event. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a little impromptu uh, reporting and ask them some questions about uh, posse comitatus and uh, if they thought they were just, you know, decent, helping to desensitize the people for military on the streets and whatnot. And it's funny, um, you'll notice. I mentioned to him about the, you know, he says that, well, at least we're wearing the old uniforms, you know, that are less threatening. And I said, well, yeah, at least they're not the black paramilitary Nazi uniforms. And, you know, he got a little chuckle out of that. 
Then right after that, we'll go right into a clip which was actually a few days prior. Welcome, I am Mikhail Phelan and this is InfoWars Report, live from Washington State, the epicenter of the psychotic eugenics Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now many of you may be going, Bill and Melinda Gates, psychotic? I thought he was just a superhero. I thought he was a uh, superman bringing vaccines all across the land and giving free plants and vegetables to the poor children of Africa. Well, we're going to take a little deeper look. I mean, I know the saying goes, God created man, man created fire, man created the wheel, and Bill Gates created the Zoom. But is there more to Bill Gates than ECI? We're going to go to a report right now and find out. Jason Burmis here reporting for InfoWars.com. Folks, unfortunately, it is my sad duty to tell you that drone technology has come here to America and is now being used illegally against the American populace. But first, let's take a look at the history of drone technology and how the public has become more and more aware of it over the last five to ten years through this illegitimate war on terror. It is openly admitted that both in Pakistan and Afghanistan not only are we using drones to kill the enemy but in many cases our targets have indeed been wrong and we have killed innocent men women and children hello and welcome to the freedom files my name is Jill Elizabeth and I'm starting a new web-based series that's going to be featuring stories of people who are truly living their freedom they're living the solution now this is the first edition, but it is a special edition. It's being done in conjunction with Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Now the purpose of these stories is to move beyond, as I said, just talking about the problem, moving beyond statistics and facts, and featuring real people who are living their solution in their home, with their health, their finances, their business, their communities, and within our country. So I'm hoping to both inform and inspire you. Now in this first episode what I want to talk about is something that's very controversial right now is the Second Amendment. And I want to share with you how I shifted from being very much against the Second Amendment to being very much for it. And I want to offer you a new perspective and hopefully bring a new meaning that will take the two divisions of pro for and against and find a way to come together and hopefully create a world or a country in which we can find some unity on this issue. So I appreciate you being here. I look forward to sharing this information with you. And a special thank you to Alex Jones and his staff for allowing me to bring this episode to you. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars Bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. And we are back. Thank you for joining us. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. And before we go to our next guest, Luke Rudowski, I wanted to cover a couple news items that I came across. And uh, the first being a headline that is certainly an attention getter from the LA Times. DEA forgot student in cell drank his own urine to stay alive. A San Diego student who was forgotten by federal drug agents and left in a holding cell for five days without food, without water, or access to a toilet 
Well, he drank his own urine to survive. The man identified as 23-year-old Daniel Chong, no relation to Tommy, was detained for questioning along with eight other people during a raid in which agents seized guns, ammunition, and various drugs, according to the DEA. Do what I had to do to survive, you know. I had to... And for Daniel Chong, surviving his horrifying ordeal inside a 5x10 holding cell, similar to this one, meant drinking his own urine. About three times. On day five, agents finally opened his cell door. Suffering from signs of kidney failure, Chong was rushed by ambulance to Sharp Memorial. So Daniel Chong was jailed. He was not arrested, but he was detained for questioning, and he got lost in the system. He was trapped in a 5 by 10 cell for, what, five days, no food, no water, uh, no uh, toilet access. And, you know, I, somebody had to have heard him pounding on the doors. Nobody responded. He was yelling and screaming for days till finally somebody found him. But truly, more evidence that our prison, jail system, our entire justice system is in serious need of an overhaul. And that brings us to our next story. We have an update on the chicken man. You may recall the case of Andrew Wardace, where he tragically died on March 26th following an explosion in his home. This why, uh, while he was surrounded by Georgia County Marshals who were in the process of forcibly evicting him from his property. Well, his property was seized under green zoning laws as the rogue state of Georgia basically claimed his land as a future conservation area. You know, they're calling it green space. After years of relentless harassment, torment, threats, Mr. Wardays died in an apparent suicide after a huge explosion and fire at his home. This, like I said, while he was surrounded by armed U.S. Marshals who were getting ready to evict him. And now new details have emerged in this tragic case. It's now coming to light that Roswell officials may have put immense pressure on Mr. Wardays' original mortgage holder to sell the mortgage note on his home only to have it end up in the possession of a phony trust company that appears, well, it appears not to have ever existed. And um, I talked with Andrew's attorney, Ryan Strickland, about this the other day. Here's what he had to say. Now, I read there was an examiner.com story where that came out, and it was about the equity trust company or they called it equity trust company custodian, and the word company is handwritten and initialed. That is that is odd to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounds like an illegal foreclosure because this led up this transition or the transfer and assignment document is what led to what you called it, it's an FBO ninety one ninety one IRA, which you've never heard of before, and that eventually led to the uh, foreclosure. Am I right? That's right, and that that's the basis of what of the case that we were just starting to bring for him when when uh, uh, when everything kind of unraveled. Uh, we were filing a motion to stop his eviction from taking place on the basis that he had been foreclosed on illegally. Um, namely, when they sent out the foreclosure notice, they identified the owner of his mortgage as Equity Trust Company, FBO, which stands for, for, for the benefit of. So it looks like 9191 IRA owned his mortgage. But I know the, docu the document didn't have any address, name, telephone number. There's no contact information. And that's required by Georgia law, right? It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. So it turns out the entire eviction process was fraudulent to begin with, which is something that we speculated all along. That brings us to our quote of the day. This one is from H.L. Minken. All government, of course, is against liberty. And speaking of governments against liberty, our next guest recently confronted President Obama's information czar, Cass Sunstein. Uh, this was during a rare public appearance at the New York University Law School. My name is Bill DeBerg from Brooklyn College. And I know you wrote up many articles, but I think the most telling one about you is the 2008 one called Conspiracy Theories, where you openly advocated government agents infiltrate activist groups of not loving truth and also stifle dissent online. I was wondering, why do you think it's the government's job, or why do you think the government should uh, go after family members who have questions about 9-11, responders who are lied to about the air, survivors whose testimony commits, and also government whistleblowers that were gagged 
because they released information that contradicts the official story. Why do you think the government should do that? I think, as, as Ricky said, I've written hundreds of articles, and I remember some and not others. That one I don't remember very well. I, I, I hope I didn't say that. Um, but whatever was said in that article, my role in government is um, to oversee federal rulemaking in a way that is uh, uh, wholly disconnected from the vast majority of my academic writing, including that. So I know that I was just asking because you may be the next Supreme Court Justice, or <laughs> and you did write those things, and that's why I want to bring them up to you. So I, I, all I can say is that there are a lot of things that I've written, I've written, I guess, and there are even more things I've said to have written. That, uh, uh, I may agree with some of the things I've written, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> focus on the, uh, what my boss wants me to do. Cass Sunstein, before he joined the dark forces of the Obama administration, that's not a racial slur, folks. I was actually referencing Star Wars right there. But Stevenson wrote a, uh, Sunstein, excuse me, wrote a couple of papers for the University of Chicago and Harvard where he called for a ban on conspiracy theories even went as far to say that legal action should be taken against anyone who created or uh, started what he called dangerous conspiracy theories. The guy is a real piece of work. And now we are joined by uh, Luke Radowski from We Are Change, who caught up with Sunstein and asked the questions that nobody in the mainstream is asking. You know, this is truly hardcore, balls-to-the-wall citizen journalism at its best, and certainly no stranger to confrontation. Please welcome to the show, Luke Rudowski. Luke, how are you doing today? Hey, thanks, Darren. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm doing great. Really tired, really busting my hump over here. There's always so much to do in this info war. Well, I was thinking, should I call you uh, Luke or should I call you Bill DeBerg? Whichever one you prefer. <laughs> I like the way you started that, but... Uh, now, Cass wrote a paper, I mean, we're talking about his paper called Conspiracy Theorist, calling for gov governments to infiltrate extremist groups. Does that mean Infowars.com? Does that mean weird change? I mean, are you an extremist? I mean, he pretty much wrote uh, the whole blueprint for agent provocateurs, how government agents should go on chat rooms to stifle dissent and to make and to pretty much fight the info war and to troll uh, a lot of people who are bringing out ideas, ideas which, of course, Sunstein uh, deems dangerous. I mean, he went as far as to saying that government agents should infiltrate real-life groups, real-life activist organizations, and uh, it doesn't even stop there. I mean, he even proposed attacks on ideas, attacks on, uh, you know, posting things online if you're posting conspiracy theories, or even eliminating uh, conspiracy theories totally uh, from the internet. Now, I hate that term, conspiracy theorists. We're not theorists. We're here representing family members who have questions, survivors who survived 9-11 and their testimony conflicts with the official story, first responders who were lied, and of course, whistleblowers who were gagged by exposing information that conflicts with the official version of 9-11. I mean, 9-11 truth is so important to what we're facing today on this war on terror, on this war on the American people. It's why we have the TSA putting uh, their hands down everybody's pants. It's why we have this massive police state, the Patriot Act, and all these draconian laws coming into place right now in America. And it, the, the key to getting rid of that is exposing 9-11 for what it really was. Well, these are the questions everybody should be asking. And like I said at the beginning, nobody in the mainstream seems to have the guts to go out and, and do what you're doing. This is truly a Patriot uh, citizen journalism at its best. And, um, you know, He's attempting to block or ban the Second Amendment, as far as I'm concerned right here. And no big surprise that he's in the lineup for, you know, he could be a future appointee to the Supreme Court. Of course, and you know, it, it even goes further. There are so many questions I could have cornered, cornered uh, Sunstein on. I mean, he even is known for saying that, you know, people are stupid. Uh, when we find out they have a little Homer Simpson in them, they could be easily manipulated. That's a quote from Cass Sunstein. There's so many different things. He holds a high position in Obama's office. Uh, he's his favorite to be a Supreme Court justice, and he needs to be grilled. He needs to be asked these questions before he comes into more power. And, you know, we have to face the music here. I mean, the prostitutes, the whole respondents, the mainstream corporate media will not ask these questions, and we can't expect somebody else to do, to do that. 
And I realized that, and we have to understand that the only person who are, who's going to stand up, the only person who's going to ask these questions is you, is the person uh, listening right now. We all have the power. We all have uh, the authority within us to, you know, just smarten up, go out there, find out where these guys are at, and to ask them real legitimate questions because the mainstream media will not do it. Uh, and it's up to us, all of us, to realize the real power we have and informing people and letting people know the truth by just asking simple questions. It's that easy. Well, you sort of left them speechless and, and kind of stuttering there. It seems like you have that sort of effect on, on, on these kind of guys. I've seen quite a few of your confrontations. Um, I guess I think my favorite part in the video is how you were persistent. You know, you didn't give up. Uh, his handlers were there trying to stop you and you kept going. At one point you even stopped and I think that was my favorite part of the video where you stopped for a second and then you said, nah, man, I got to ask this question. I got to ask this question. Yeah, because and you, you just he, barricaded yeah. through there and went after him anyway. Yeah, he publicly, he publicly stated, I don't know what you're talking about. He, he publicly stated that he didn't know what he wrote himself. Which oh, is, come on. He's uh, on record for saying this stuff. He wrote it in, what, 2008? He's fully aware of what he said. But it's the most controversial paper he wrote that was criticized by scholars all over, all over the world, all over the scholarly institution, because he openly called for government agents to infiltrate activist organizations and activist groups. He was criticized very highly for that, and I didn't believe him. And at that point, I could have just left it, but I wanted to follow up. I wanted to know, you know, he even said himself, I hope I didn't say something like that. And I was like, if you do, can you retract them? We know you did, it's in writing. He, everybody, you know, is speaking out about this. It was a huge controversial piece of paper that you wrote. And can you just retract them? And he wouldn't even answer that. He didn't want to go on record saying he's retracting what he said before, which proves uh, that he does stand behind it. And he was just trying to weasel his way out of it. And we have to find a way to be persistent, be smart, and to stand our ground and to know uh, how to actually get these guys in that moment and asking them to clarify if he still stands by them, uh, you know, really just shows everybody. This guy's a weasel. This guy's a liar. This guy just lied what he previously just told me. And uh, he is uh, standing by the statements he stood by. It, it, he could have easily, I mean, I don't know why he didn't do this. He could have easily either stood behind ideas. Everybody knows he wrote it. He knows he wrote it. He could have easily stood behind them and had an intellectual conversation with me about it. Or he could have said, no, you know, I don't stand by them. I retract whatever uh, is written previously before. I don't know why he didn't do that. And I don't know. I mean, these guys are just implicating themselves and making themselves look guilty. I mean, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. It's easy. And I <laughs> encourage everybody to go out there and to question these guys. You have no idea what amazing feelings, what amazing moments come out from just talking to somebody, communicating with somebody. I mean, one of, you know, it's, it's just such a thrill, and I encourage everybody to participate and to take part in our life, in our world, in our info war, as you call it, and to get involved, get out there, and ask real questions. Well, we need like 100 more, 100,000 more people like you, you know, 100,000 Paul Revere's, if you will, that go out there and ask these questions that nobody else is asking. You know, our, our uh, future, America's future is in the balance. So I really uh, admire you for what you're doing. And to me, you know, I used to be a big uh, football fan uh, before I woke up and broke the matrix. And this is my new football game. When I see you corner these guys and expose them and, and watch them you know, try to run and hide from you. It's it's like you just scored a touchdown, and uh, so I love to see that that sort of reaction from these you know these corrupt government officials and these globalists that that you seem to track down a corner. So do you get the same kind of rush? I mean, it must be a rush when you go there because you're you're risking being arrested, being tased. You know, God only knows what's going to happen. You've gotten beat up before by New York police officers, so you never really know what's going to happen, and it's very exciting journalism as well. It is, and I've been beat up, arrested, and assaulted, and harassed, and threatened for doing this many times, but there's nothing that beats the thrill of going up to somebody powerful, looking them in the eyes, and letting them know, we know what you're doing, we know what's going on. I mean, Cass Sunstein is on record saying people are dumb, they could be easily manipulated. I don't think people could, I don't think people are dumb, I don't think the people listening right now are dumb, I think... They're very smart, intellectual, beautiful human beings that are waking up to the world that we're living in right now. Um, and the reality is ugly, but the solution is beautiful. To quote my friend Joel, which I recently also made a tribute video to, but the solution is beautiful and it's amazing uh, to 
go through this feeling. I mean, just going there. I mean, I was very nervous. I still do get nervous and it's normal to get nervous. A lot of people out there who are going to do this for the first time are going to get really nervous. You're going to shake. You're going to get goosebumps. You're going to stutter. You're going to be scared. But just knowing the effect that you could have, believing in yourself, being confident is the best thing you could do. And just speaking from the heart, speaking truth is the most powerful thing you could do to authority. Because uh, when you look somebody in the eye like that and you tell him, he, see, he sees that. You could see it in his eyes. He's afraid. He's, he, he, in his mind, he's like, we have one that could see. And it changes his perception uh, of him thinking that we're all just stupid, which he, again, said publicly. We're not. And by all of us standing up and not being afraid to speak truth, speak from our heart, well, and I think these guys, they honestly believe that the people are dumbed down, but that's because they're sheltered. They're, they're, they usually, if they speak to any media at all, it's the controlled, bought, and paid for uh, mainstream media. Uh, they're not used to going out in public. They rarely go out in public because of, you know, when they do, it's, uh, there's a good chance that there could be a confrontation like uh, what we saw with, with you and Susting. Yeah, it's really, it's really horrible to see where our mainstream uh, media is where the prostitutes and correspondents are fed questions and asked the questions that the people they're interviewing are asking them to ask. That's not journalism. That's pretty much uh, propaganda. That's prompting up other people. And that's, I, I think that's, I, I think the mainstream media, and I think uh, the, the six corporations that control almost 90% of everything we see in here on media are responsible for, for a lot of the problems that we're facing in today's societies. I hold them more responsible than I do anybody else because they're the ones who are dumbing people down. They're the ones who are not telling people what's going on, not telling them the truth, not following up with real information. And the only way to do it is to be truly independent. We have no corporations running us. We have nobody telling us what to do. We have no bosses. We have nothing but you listening right now, supporting us. That's the only thing keeping us going right now is the people listening in right now. And it's the only way to do it. And it's hard, but I love doing it. And we're not going away anytime soon. We're only beginning here. We're going to have a lot more interesting videos coming up very soon. That's right. Well, you're damn good at what you do. And, and take it from me. You know, I, I worked with the enemy. I worked for uh, Scripps Howard newspaper. And I saw firsthand for myself just how difficult it was to get past, you know, the important information past the gatekeepers. Um, I even read, uh, you know, the news uh, once a day on the, uh, the radio and they would try to get me to announce, you know, uh, where people could take their children to go get the H1N1 flu shots, for example. And uh, so we had confrontations like that where I refused. I I'm not gonna go on the radio and tell people how to get these, uh, these injections. So, um, so I definitely know that uh, they are corrupt and that ind yeah. independent media is a must, independent journalism is a must. What's next on yeah, your I mean, agenda? Or, or let me ask you this. Yeah. What is on the forefront right now? What, what do you think is the most important issue that we're facing right now? And how do you warn others to, you know, about our state of the union, those who have broken the matrix, what can you get them to tell others out there to, to warn people? I think the most important thing that uh, is troublesome today and the most important thing that we should concentrate on is getting rid of the fear. I think if we get rid of the fear and the uh, paranoia and the hatred, and if you get rid of that, I think a lot of more beautiful things will happen. And the way you do that is just by uh, standing up for what you believe in, speaking from the heart, and being able to be yourself and not being afraid to, to just be the human being that you are and not conform and be able to speak out and be able to talk out. Our words, our you know, thoughts have a lot of power, have a lot of energy, and we need to utilize that in a positive way, in a positive method uh, that helps promote love and compassion and being there for each other and standing up with each other and building communities and building organizations together to resist the tyranny that we're facing today. But that starts with you losing your fear and believing in yourself. And that's what I've been calling for for day one. We have to be the change we want to see in this world. Nobody else will do it. We could complain about the mainstream media not doing it all day, but instead of complaining, I'd rather go out there and do their job for them and make them irrelevant. That is my main duty. That's what I want to do in life. I want to make sure the mainstream media becomes irrelevant by doing their job better than they ever will and by asking the questions that they never will. And if we all just make a stand, if we all stand up, it's going to be a beautiful thing. But it takes you listening right now to actually do that. And, again, 
We're not going away anywhere. We got no, a lot there's, there's a great awakening happening right now. And I think, you know, as, as time goes on, more and more people are going to wake up. Tell us about We Are Change New York. What's, what's the latest that's going on there? Yeah, we just released four new videos for May Day yesterday with Tom Morello, Immortal Technique, Max Kaiser. We have videos of police brutally attacking protesters in New York City yesterday, leaving some people bloody. And we're doing live video reports almost uh, a couple days a week now. And you could find those at by going on my Twitter. If you go to twitter.com forward slash Luke, we are change. Luke, we are change on Twitter. You could see the instant moment that I'm going live and you could live through the moments that I'm going through. You could see exactly what's happening live, unedited. And I think that's where uh, uh, new citizen journalism is heading. It's showing people exactly what's happening unedited at demonstration, at press conferences. We're going to start doing those a lot more. So definitely tune in, watch, participate, get involved, support us as much as you can. But most importantly, the best thing you could do is going out there and doing it yourself. We Are Change is an idea. We Are Change is not an organization. It's not a group. It's an idea that we take upon ourselves to change the world for the better. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, and that's something that, of course, we're doing here as well, a lot of live events. And uh, it looks like we'll be joining you at, the, at Bilderberg here uh, in the next few weeks. Looking forward to that. You know, and I think we should have you on the show again sometime. I'd like to show, cover like your, your top five confrontations and kind of just uh, break those, each of those down. I think it's a very effective tool to show how these, you know, government officials, the elitist, how they run and hide. And when they are truly exposed, it kind of shows everyone exactly what's yeah. going on here. So I think your videos are an yeah. important tool. So it'd be it good to have you back. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh -oh. It'll be awesome to be back. It'll be hard to pick the top five uh, video conferences. Let's do top uh, video ten. Video of the politicians. <laughs> we'll do the top but, ten. But my favorite videos right now are the satire comedy videos where we use humor to educate people about the real issues, about what's happening, to awaken a lot of people that are not open to this message and don't usually hear this. But by using comedy, we slowly enter more people uh, into this realm of thought, into uh this kind of information, and I think comedy and satire is the new way to go to uh, reach more and more people and to get them involved and to get them to care when they don't usually care. Satire and comedy, we started really doing a lot of those, and also human life interest stories that uh, touch the soul and touch people's human emotions to make people understand that we're all human beings, we're all here in this world together, and we have to enjoy the short time that we have with each other and to make the best out of it. Well, I'm into that, brother. I, I, I certainly appreciate all that you do. I really liked your piece that you did on the, in the subway in New York. What's the title of that for folks that may have not have seen just, it yet? Yeah, it's just keep going. You got nothing to lose. Okay, that's one of my favorites. Your cinematography is getting better and better, too. So, well, hey, we're running out of time. Uh, perhaps we'll see you at Bilderberg. If not, I uh, look forward to having you on again soon. Thank you for joining us, Luke. Uh, God be with you, and I uh, look forward to having you again soon. Thank you so much. I'll see you at Bilderberg. All right, man. Look forward to it. Okay, that just about does it for tonight's show. Thank you, Paul Joseph Watson, for covering the first half of the news. Thank you, Luke Rudowski, for joining us in that awesome interview. And thank you for watching. We hope that you will join us again tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, good night. God bless. Fight the new world order.